Whew. This has been quite a week. Have you ever started a project thinking, this will be easy. I'll just break this project down into a few component steps and then I'll crank them out. And then you start the project and you realize that each step has like a million little sub steps to it. That was me this past week when I released this video about the hierarchy of reliability. And I thought, no problem, I'll just do one large overview video and then I'll break out each layer of the hierarchy into a separate episode. And now I find myself trying to fit like 10 hours of comprehensive monitoring information into one five minute video. So rather than do something incredibly awful like that, I'm just gonna do a few monitoring episodes and I'll cover some of the key things that I find that engineers struggle with. So in this episode, I'll share with you how to build better dashboards and how to clean up your existing messy ones. Back when I worked at Datadog, I used to work with a lot of engineers to help build better dashboards. Often I talked to an engineer and they tell me about an incident and it usually started with a story something like this. I got a PagerDuty alert that a service was down, and so I logged into Datadog and I found this dashboard. Or they'd have the opposite experience. They'd tell me about the megalithic dashboard that had every graph of every service and an infinitely scrolling page of doom. So here's my formula for better dashboards. First, I like to constrain my dashboards, one dashboard to one service. This avoids the giant mega dashboards that make it hard to find information, especially as you build larger, more distributed applications. But when you do this, providing context and links to additional information becomes very important. So that's where I start. Where is the documentation for this service? Where's the code repo so I can see recent changes? Where's the build pipeline so I can see recent deploys and how it passed tests? Where are the dashboards and information for service dependencies, things that this service relies on? And lastly, where can I find logs and tracing information for this service? All of this information is extremely valuable when responding to an incident. So you want to ensure that it's easily available and that you won't need to go searching for it in the middle of an outage. With the contextual information covered, I like to focus on traffic, errors, latency, and saturation. These have been called the four golden signals. When creating a dashboard, we want the most important information to appear at the top with supporting data below. So I like to start with traffic. We often think of traffic as things like web requests. How many visitors are hitting our web app? But traffic can be broader. If you're on a database team, this could be client connections or numbers of queries. For a messaging queue, you'll want to know the number of messages stored and retrieved. I also like to keep at least two graphs, one of the overall traffic rate and one of success rates. For example, what's the total number of page requests on my website? And what's the percentage of successfully returned page requests? A drop in overall traffic could indicate a problem with the network or a downstream service. And a drop in successfully returned requests would indicate something wrong with my app. Next, we'll include errors. Individual errors will likely be overwhelming. So I usually don't embed a feed of logs here. We can easily get to the logs if we need them just by using that link that we've already included above. But we do want to include our overall error count or rate. And it's also a good idea to break this out if possible by error type. A stacked graph like this will allow us to easily see both the overall and contributing error counts. Latency is next. We want to know how long things are taking. Just because our site is up doesn't mean that things are working properly. We want to know if our web app is sluggish or if we're monitoring a database, if queries are taking too long or if items are sitting in a queue too long before being processed. And saturation is last. 
Saturation refers to the resources I have available and whether I have enough. Most commonly, this is gonna be things like CPU, memory, disk space, disk IO, and network bandwidth. But they can also include things like queued locks for databases or queued data for systems like Kafka. So that's my starting point for building dashboards. As you build your dashboards, you'll wanna customize it and include app or service specific health indicators. But by ensuring that every service has contextual information and metrics for traffic, errors, latency, and saturation, you'll set a solid baseline and ensure that you have good visibility into the health of your application. If you found this episode helpful, click the like button. And if you're interested in more videos about monitoring or other reliability topics, click the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.